What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Oh, do you see what's behind me? Oh, man. What? what I, I did it again and again and again and again. So, look, here's the deal. I'm going to jump right into this. Today, we are talking about the 2019 Ram 2500 Bighorn Edition. Eh, just a step up from the base model. Two wheel drive. Oh, I know. That just pissed a lot of people off. And. 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel. Oh, that just made a lot of people even matter. A two wheel drive Cummins. Ah, what was I thinking? What's wrong with you, Randy? They don't hold their resale value. It's junk. A two wheel drive Cummins is junk. What's your, what's your issue, man? Uh, believe me, I've already heard it all on Instagram. Okay. Trust me. I've heard all of it on Instagram and Facebook, but alas, I picked this truck for some very specific reasons. It suits what I do absolutely perfectly. What do I do? What do I need a truck for? I need a truck for this, for this little bitty trailer that probably weighs, hmm, I don't know, what do you guys think? I would guess 3,000, right? Maybe, maybe 3,000, 30, 3,500 pounds, something like that. And then of course, when I put some of these cars on it, like an S-Class Mercedes, those weigh 4,600 pounds. So let's just say around 10,000 pounds. My little F-150, although it would do it, it didn't do it particularly happily. The F-150 had a quarter of a million miles on her. It had no warranty. It had rear differential issues that we never resolved. And let's face it, guys, there's no comparison. There's no comparison. There's not. And I love that F-150. I did. But this has 370 horsepower. This has 850 pound-feet of torque at 1,700 RPM. And let me tell you why I decided to buy a new truck. Because it doesn't make sense, right? And for those of you that follow me on Instagram and Facebook, I know you're going to be sitting there going, wait a minute, he said it was a 2020. I thought it was a 2020. <laughs> I did. I honestly thought this was a 2020. And when I entered the VIN to add my insurance to it uh, last night, uh, it showed me that it was a 2019. So I did not get screwed over. This is just a leftover 2019. And uh, it, 19, 20, doesn't matter. They're the exact same truck anyway. Now, in my personal opinion, I don't think it's an absolutely gorgeous uh, truck that just takes the cake with looks, but I think it looks decent. I think it looks good. Uh, and, and it's a work truck for me, guys. That's important to remember. So what have I done? Let's get into it. I traded in the Tesla. I, yeah, I know, I know. I traded in the P90D, the 2016 P90D. That hurt. That that hurt a lot. Uh, truly did. That's a phenomenal car. I didn't trade it because there was anything wrong with it. I didn't trade it because I didn't like it. I actually traded it because I loved it too much to put it through these Oklahoma roads and I can't bear witness to the things that are going to happen to it out here. I don't drive it. I leave it safely locked in the garage. And that's no type of life for a car, guys. The Marauder here is a perfect example of that. This car could sit here and tell you stories about how damn lonely she is sitting here collecting dust, not being used, not being driven, not being enjoyed, collecting bird crap. It's, it's just, it doesn't make any damn financial sense. It literally hit me like a ton of bricks the other day, guys. I was in the F-150. I'm always in the F-150 and I, again, no complaints with the F-150 at all. That truck was a trooper. But literally, you ever had an epiphany? You know, you're driving and suddenly it just feels like someone hit you in the head with a stack of bricks and you realize something that you should have realized long ago and you kind of kick yourself in the rear for it. Well, that's what happened to me in the F-150. I heard a commercial about uh, David Stanley uh, Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram offering 84 months at 0% interest on their new car inventory. And I was like, okay, a lot of dealerships are doing this. A lot of car manufacturers are actually doing this. 
Obviously, I have no interest in buying another Chevy. No offense to you Chevy guys, I've been burned by Chevy enough for a while. I'm going to take a break from buying Chevys, uh, at least brand new from the dealership anyway. Maybe used, but, but definitely not new for a while. Um, I decided, let's just go check out David Stanley Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. It's in Midwest City. I was already out there anyway. I was like, what's it going to hurt? If we can get no interest... Oh my, that's a deal. That's a steal of a deal at no interest. Now, don't get me wrong. I wasn't paying exceptionally high interest to begin with. On the F-150, I was paying like 3.25%. And on the Tesla, I was paying 4.39, some, something like that. It was 4. Point, low fours uh, percent interest. So interest rates, rent, it turned to interest rates <laughs> were not bad on the Tesla, nor were they bad on the F-150, but nothing beats 0%. So... I decided to go into the dealership, uh, see what they had to offer, and they offered me this truck. So I'll get into some numbers here for you, okay? The Tesla I owed $66,500 on, approximately, these numbers are approximate, uh, $66,500 on the Tesla. I still owed $11,000 and change on the F-150. Add that up, guys. All right, $66,000 and $11,000. $77,000, $78,000 is what I owed on those two cars. So I thought about it and I found a base model, whatever they call it, Tradesman uh, Ram 2500. My, my specific requests were two wheel drive, and I'll get to that in a moment, and uh, Cummins turbo diesel. I don't want to have any issues ever again having to worry about being able to pull a trailer okay that's that's just the and and from my understanding the cummins is a great great engine that's relatively easy to work on and these come with a five-year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty so we go from seventy-seven thousand dollars in debt and by the time I'm done wrapping up, yes, there was some negative equity, guys, some negative equity. MSRP on this was like $52,000. All right, so I wrapped up some of the negative equity into the rebates that they were offering. There were hella rebates on it. Uh, this truck, they were wanting $45-ish. I think it's about $46,500 after dealer fees and stuff like that. $46,500 out the door. And we got rid of $25,000 in debt. I was able to, in one evening, wipe out $25,000 in debt and walk away with a brand new Cummins Turbo Diesel 2500 Heavy Duty Ram. Now I can already hear your questions coming in. I can hear the comments literally being typed and don't get me wrong, I'm not upset. I totally understand that a lot of you are probably very confused about my financial decisions, and quite frankly, that's okay. What's important to remember is that I wiped out $25,000 in debt. I have two cars now paid off on my credit report. My income to debt ratio has decreased definitely by a pretty decent margin. For those of you wondering why I didn't trade in the Corvette, if I had traded in the Corvette, I would have lost $14,000 on the Corvette, okay, uh, in depreciation. That's not happening. The Corvette is in litigation right now, meaning the Corvette isn't going anywhere. I continue to drive it. I'm allowed to drive it. it is, nothing has changed as far as that's concerned. I make my payments and it's insured and everything like that. But it is in the middle of a buyback type negotiation thing with General Motors. Therefore, it would be absolutely stupid of me to take the Corvette and eat $14,000 loss when I have the opportunity to give it back to General Motors and collect all of my money back every single day dollar of my money back. So that is why I did not trade in the Corvette. Now I know you want to know, why did I go with a two-wheel drive truck? Well guys, I'm going to be very honest with you and you are probably going to disagree with me. Some of you are going to disagree with me and some of you are going to see my point of view. A four-wheel drive truck is going to cost extra. Four-wheel drive isn't free, okay? If I want the transfer case and I want front axles, uh, that's going to cost me additional money. And the goal of this, well, another question I get is, why didn't I go for, what do they call it, the Laramie? 
I think it's called Laramie. Why didn't I go with a higher grade package, a 70 or $80,000 truck? The goal here, ladies and gentlemen, contrary to what some of you believe, was to save money, to decrease my debt, to make my payments a little bit more affordable because, believe it or not, YouTube revenue is crashing pretty hard. I have lost 50% of my income in the past month. Now, I am fine. I can still pay my bills. Everything is okay. I want to make that very clear, but it was enough to make me a little bit uncomfortable and I don't like being uncomfortable. So I saw a perfect opportunity to wipe out 25 grand and give myself a little bit of extra money every single month. So the idea of getting a bigger package, a bunch of extras that I don't want and don't really need just didn't make any personal sense or financial sense. This truck is for, it's for work. It's for hauling stuff down here to AAR headquarters, which is why it's here today. We brought a bunch of tools. I brought a bunch of parts because they're gonna be working on the Cobalt SS soon. I'm gonna be working on the white S500 soon, and we're gonna be working on the S430 soon. So this is a truck that although it's new and I don't wanna trash it, I, I wanted something that wasn't gonna be so outrageously expensive that I would get angry if I got a scratch, if I got a ding, if the interior got a stain. I don't want to get pissed off over normal things happening to this truck. If this was a seventy, eighty thousand dollar truck, I can I can bet that you would get mad if you got a ding or a scratch. So to close out on the four wheel drive issue, on my F-150, it was four wheel drive, okay? I can think of maybe three times ever that I used it and it wasn't because I needed it. I used it just as a precaution. Four wheel drive means the front end is going to wear out faster. Front end parts are under more stress. It's going to wear out faster. Transfer case, all the extra weight, all the extra parts means extra maintenance, means when things do eventually break in the future, more money out of pocket. I don't need four wheel drive, guys. All I need is that 850 pound feet of torque to the back wheels so that when I got a trailer and a big Bertha S class on the back, I can tow that thing right down the road like I was in my F-150 with nothing behind it. That's the reason money savings, weight savings, economy savings, and less wear and tear. Again, it all comes down to more money back in my pocket. So before I show you the interior, which you've probably all seen a Ram 2500, this is not a new generation or new body style truck. They've been around for a while and quite frankly, the Dodge, or sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the Ram has kind of looked the same for a while now and that's fine with me. I'm not worried about it. Like I said, I didn't buy it because I needed it to look like a showpiece. I bought it to work and in my opinion, it still looks very, very nice. I think it is a beautiful truck, but it's missing a few things. Number one, this truck sits relatively high off the ground. I bought it yesterday. Yesterday for me was May 1st, 2020, and it is brand new, even though it is a leftover uh, 2019. It had 28 miles when I bought it, and it has about 110 miles on it now. Climbing into this thing is not the easiest thing in the world. It, 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 give you an idea, okay? The body, comes up to my knee. That's the bottom of the door comes up to my knee. So it is not the easiest thing for people to get in and out of. I, I already went to, what do they call it? Four wheel drive parts. We have one where I live. I already have ordered new running boards that I'm going to have them install for me. And because this truck has a lot of chrome, I'm going to go with the stainless and black, the stainless steel with like the black uh, foot things. You know what I mean? The black grippy things. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. So they, running boards, priority number one. While I get the running boards done, we're going to do something else because I did use this truck to haul some stuff today down here. And as you can see, I have already started scraping up my beautiful, beautiful bed. Lots of scratches over here. 
and all over here. That is not acceptable. Yes, I had to learn what DEF was. I never heard of it before, but uh, I have now. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, so uh, bed liner. I'm getting one of those padded slash kind of carpeted texture uh, bed liners. That's coming very soon. I'm getting the Tanu cover. I'm getting, I think it's a foldable, it's called a black black back black or something i don't know i don't remember but it folds into like quarter sections all right it is hard i think it's an aluminum type thing it will hold 400 pounds on top and it should look really good so i think with the tanu cover and the bed liner and the running boards that should really make the truck not only look a little bit better but I think function a little bit better too. I don't want to damage it. And I like to be able to put my stuff in the back without worrying about somebody stealing it while I run into the store to get something real quick. Now, as far as mods, are we going to do a DEF delete? No, we're not. No, we're not. I am not going to do any mods to this truck that could potentially void my warranty. We will keep it as it was intended to be. We're not lifting it, although I may not be opposed to putting a set of wheels and tires on it at some point. Now, I will go ahead and show you the interior. It's actually a very nice interior for the price. I got my little phone holder here. Turns out you don't need it in this truck. You've got cup holders galore. All right, two cup holders, two. Why you need two? I don't know, a can and a cup or something right there. It's got this really cool kind of, I don't know, like black wood or stone or something. No leather. Again, money savings, and I really prefer cloth because I will probably be having my dog in this truck. Having a dog in your new truck with leather seats is just asking to get things torn up. Here is the dashboard. It shows 133 miles. I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, it went away. Maybe I can turn it on. There we go. There we go. At the very bottom, 133 miles is what's on the odometer of this right now. I'll go ahead and turn off. We got all the, we've got the, uh, the medium grade touchscreen. Uh, they have a small radio and then they have this one and then you have a much bigger one that kind of comes all the way down. Uh, this does have, let's shut that off. That's, that is annoying. Let's, I said, shut up. Okay. All right. So we do have XM, we have the touchscreen. It has built in trailer brakes, which I think is really awesome. That is a lifesaver. We also have uh, engine brakes, or I think they call them Jake brakes. It has two cameras on the rear. You have one up here that is a cargo camera, kind of in the middle of there. So you can see your cargo while you're driving. If you're worried about something getting ready to fly out, you just want to keep an eye on it. That touch screen will allow you to keep an eye on your cargo. Also, it has the backup camera right here. It locks when you lock the doors. It actually locks the tailgate, so you're not going to have to worry about somebody getting in and messing with your stuff. This truck also has remote start. Of course, it's got remote keyless entry. I think every car today has that. So we can do that real quick. I think you just push it twice and it should. There she goes. She's quiet, very quiet. I was actually kind of disappointed in how quiet the Cummins is. I actually really enjoy the loud blah, 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 blah of a diesel engine. And this one, uh, this one doesn't do it. This one doesn't do it at all. All right. I'll show you the back. The back actually has some... Oh, I guess I have to find my key again. I guess they don't want people stealing it, right? There we go. Okay, let's try this again. Very nice interior. Uh, lots and lots of room. I do have a few things. I've got tools over there, air compressor, uh, a light. But the seats split 70-30, and you have these, uh, these clipped down. But you have storage units underneath here there's my little gopro mount my scanner adapter i've got all kinds of little miscellaneous parts for the different cars under here then you snap this down so if you're in a wreck it doesn't like fly up and kill somebody you put this back down not all not only that this folds out this way so as the guy uh told me his name was caleb my salesman uh he told me like if you got a dog or something and you don't want them on the seats you can fold your seats up fold these down and then the dog will not be messing up your seats. I thought that was a really cool 
feature. You've got air conditioning in the back. You've got two of them. Little seat pouches, of course. Take you over to the passenger side. And actually, let's go ahead and pop the hood. Although, once you've seen one Cummins, oh, hood open. Remote start canceled. That's fine. That's fine. We didn't need all the extra noise anyway. Uh, once you've seen one Cummins, you've seen them all. Oh, they put grease all over it. Oh, I wish they hadn't have done that. Uh, yeah, apparently, uh, when the dealership said they were taking it to detail, they weren't kidding. They, <laughs> they literally sprayed that grease all over this. Uh, I'll end up probably taking this to the Auto Spot LLC at some point and uh, having them steam clean all of that off. That's not a... That's not something I'm interested in. It's got pinstripes. I don't care for pinstripes. Not really my thing. We may take those off. The sooner you get them off, the better off you will be. Big horn. Basically a base model with a few extra options. Lots of room, guys. It rides like a dream. It's got lots of little cubby holes, lots of places to store things. This piece right here goes backwards it goes forwards it's got charging ports everywhere you've got a 12 volt up here you've got usb c's over here two of them an aux port right here bluetooth you got your regular usb i think those are a's right there and your phone will actually slide down into this groove here and it sits down there so you don't need a phone holder your phone literally sits here it's got apple carplay you connect it's got just about everything a cool little cubby right here that the tradesman did not have not that that really makes much of a difference but there it is obviously i am still very green when it comes to diesels there's a ton of other diesels i could have purchased and probably for around the same price and i know i know one of the last things everybody's going to be saying is i can't believe you went back to david stanley after all of the bad experiences you had at david stanley why would you go back and give them another chance well guys all i can say is i decided to give them another opportunity i did not call them there was no special deals i know a lot of people think oh he's a youtuber so they're gonna no nah, it wasn't like that guys uh I went in there, I talked to him, we had great conversation. The, uh, I think he's the sales manager, his name was Austin, and then my salesman's name was Caleb. Both of those gentlemen did everything they could to help me out, and it really wasn't that difficult. Believe it or not, guys, I actually have good credit. I really do. You, you wouldn't be able to buy the kind of cars that I buy. You know, Tesla, Corvette, Camaro, the Marauder, F-150, a brand new Dodge Ram, or sorry, Ram 2500. You can't just, you can't just go out and buy $100,000 worth of cars if you don't have good credit. Why do I have good credit? Because I'm good at paying off debt. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the truth. Is that a good thing? Not really. It's better to not be in any debt at all. And a lot of people would say, if you finance something, you can't afford it. And while I respect that opinion, I also respectfully disagree with you. Some people just do not have the financial ability to pay out, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars for a car that they want. So you finance it. Hey, as long as you pay it off and you make your payments, Where's the harm in that? The truth is, the majority of Americans finance just about everything. I mean, how many of you right now have financed your phone, right? It's a phone. You really need to finance it? No, probably not, but you like keeping your money in your pocket, right? Well, so do I. I financed my phone too. I finance all of my cars because I am a firm believer in spend somebody else's money before you spend your own. Now, it's not because I intend to rip anybody off. I mean, look at my credit. Obviously, I pay my bills. I pay my debts. It's not about that. But think about it for a second. If you had, say, $60,000 to your name and you went out and decided to spend $50,000 on a new car and you bought it and then something catastrophic happened the next day, the next week, the next month, 
you don't get your $50,000 back. Say something like this whole pandemic, for instance. I did not anticipate losing 50% of my income in a single month. Never crossed my mind, but the fact is, this was a reality check for me and a wake-up call. So for me, the thing is, if I wanted to go out and sell that Tesla private party, it wouldn't sell. Guys, not right now, not in these times. People aren't going out and buying Teslas right now. You know, people are scared, rightfully so. People are holding on to their money. People generally are not out spending a big wad of cash on these vehicles. So if I had paid cash for the Tesla, I would have been stuck with it and I would have been broke. And what do you do then? What do you do then? Sell it for $30,000 instead of 60 and, and lose all that money? I'm not saying the logic is right. I'm not saying it's wrong. What I am saying is that if something catastrophic financially happened to me today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, these cars, while it would suck to have to go back to the bank, have a repo on my credit or six repos on my credit, it would absolutely suck. But at least I would still have my cash, okay? I would still be holding on to my cash. If you go out and spend your cash on this and something like this happens, you are SOL. So I prefer to risk other people's money before I risk my own. I know a lot of you are gonna have something to say about that. You don't have to like it, but that is my logic. So before we take this beast on a test drive, I just wanna say one more thing about the purchase. I had a Tesla. It was fun, it was great, I loved it, but I loved it so much that I couldn't bring myself to drive it. I left it parked in a garage and I drove my F-150 pickup truck. And that is the end of the discussion about how this truck came to be. It's just the way it is. I realized that I had a $66,000 car sitting in the garage looking pretty on the rare occasion that I would open the garage door and let sunlight into the car. And I said to myself, that is stupid. That is ridiculous. Do you need a truck? You're always in your truck. You might as well invest the money back into your business because the business is what makes sense not a flashy Tesla, so you can go out and show it off from time to time. And for those of you that don't know Austin, you should all know Austin by now. <laughs> this is Austin, and he has a YouTube channel, and he has, how long do you think he spent out there today working on that driveway? Ah, uh, probably about four or five hours. Four or five hours, yeah. So he put in a lot of work on that driveway today, guys. He really did. So Austin has started his YouTube channel, and it is called Austin space C A R R car. That's actually that's a cool name for a YouTube channel. Yeah. To be quite honest with you, like I'm a little jealous of the name. <laughs> Your name is actually perfect for a YouTube channel. So do me a favor. He's been he's been such a big help lately. Go over to Austin's YouTube channel. Just hit that subscribe button. He's got one video on there right now, an intro video that I thought was funny as hell. <laughs> Go over there, subscribe, click the like button on his video, man. Let him know that you guys appreciate him being out here helping me. And I do, seriously. Like, You're welcome. Thank you for, for real. Yeah, you're <laughs> welcome. Big help, man. Now, back to this truck. What, what do you think of the truck? It's actually, for the type of truck it is, it's actually remarkably smooth down the road. I, I agree. I mean, I'm actually really surprised. I'm blown away by it. For something that's supposed to be a hauler, that's supposed to be the powerhouse, that's supposed to bring stuff from A to B, it's comfortable. Yeah. And relaxing. And we got our first paint chip right there from a rock flying off of my tire. <laughs> and this is why I didn't spend $80,000 on a pickup truck. <laughs> I, I completely agree with them, guys. Uh, and, and I mean, I guess I, I would sound biased if I didn't like this. If, if I said I, I love the truck, people would be like, oh, well, you're biased. I'm really not, guys. I'm, I'm, for me, it's a nice truck, but it's a, it's, it's a work truck. So I don't really care about all the things that most of you probably care about when it comes to a pickup truck. But I'll be honest with you. I've never driven one of these before until I test drove it yesterday. And when I took it out on the road, I was pleasantly surprised that something that would be classified as a probably an entry-level work truck was 
actually this nice and has this many features standard this is a great truck and in my personal and inexperienced opinion i think this truck is a hell of a value for the money this truck was listed at like forty two thousand, and you know the dealers have fees and stuff so it came out to around forty three five by the time you were done with everything out the door i had no idea brand new trucks were this cheap that's a pretty good deal honestly respect like Forgive me, guys. I know that I'm in the car business, but please keep in mind, I've never pretended to be an expert in the automotive industry. I'm not, okay? I'm still very green, and I still have a whole lot to learn, especially when it comes to diesels. But I'll tell you this. Weston approved of this truck, and if Weston approves, if it's good enough for him, it is more than good enough for me. The minute Weston messaged me and said, man, you got a solid truck right there, I was like, Hell yeah, brother. Oh, it's the wrong channel. That's not Weston's channel. That's Cletus McFarland's channel. Whatever. That's what went through him. I was like, hell yeah. If, if Weston approves of it, I feel like, I feel like I'm going to be all right. I know there's a lot of people that say you're going to have transmission problems. You're going to have DEF problems. And, and maybe I will. I, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you because, well, I've never owned one. I have no idea. <laughs> we could blow the transmission tomorrow. I don't know. I have no idea. We're going to find out together, though. So this should be interesting content for the channel. Let's see how many times this truck has to go in for recall work and service work for warranties. And that is one of the benefits, though. Buying a brand new truck, Yeah. you get that warranty. Yeah, yeah that's, that's huge, having a warranty. Even though it doesn't mean you're not going to break down, it's not a guarantee that you won't bring out. It is a guarantee that if there is a defect in materials or workmanship, they will take care of it. It will be covered without you having to pay any money out of pocket. And that, that's important. That's big. That's, that's huge. I didn't have that with the F-150. And truthfully, with the rear differential, you know, clunking and and making noises stuttering and, 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 oh. I, you know, I knew it had to be fixed and I just been kind of putting off taking it to the shop and getting it done because it was going to be a thousand dollars out the door to get it repaired nah. hey I, that's another thing we saved a thousand dollars on having to get the rear differential fixed mm -hmm. it's a thousand dollars that can go toward all those running boards tonu covering the, uh, yeah, the accessories, the stuff to kind of dress the truck up a little bit, make it a little more me and a little more comfortable and enjoyable for me and my fiance and her son. Obviously, he's he's, he's a little guy, man. So getting in this thing, he's like, Ugh. he'll need a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta get him a step stool or something just so he can get in the truck. Uh, I don't know what else to say, guys. Like, it runs great. I mean, it should. It's got 100 miles on it. It drives great, which again, it should. It's got plenty of torque. Plenty of horsepower. Austin approves. Yeah. I think the only thing that you mentioned that you are a little, not really worried about, but it's getting used to that turning radius of the truck. <sighs> That's a good point. This truck, and I know for a lot of you, this truck is a baby. A lot of you probably drive semi trucks for a living or something, or you have in the past. You drive big, big heavy equipment. You know, a truck like this is a, a matchbox car for you. Well, not for me. <laughs> Okay, for me, this is a big truck. I'm like, ah! uh, yeah, pulling into tight spaces, I'm not comfortable at all, even with the backup camera. And, and once I hook the trailer up to it, I'm going to be even more uncomfortable. So, yeah, that's a valid point. It's a lot bigger than what I'm used to, and, and it's going to take a while to absolutely get used to the way this thing turns into tight space well you don't really turn into tight spaces no. very well but i'm sure if you're experienced you would have no trouble doing it but for me it's going to take a while well guys i think i'm going to get out of here but do me a favor comment down below as i know you will i tried really hard in this video to address all of the concerns that i have been hearing on facebook Instagram, you should have traded the Corvette. Why did you buy a two wheel drive? Why didn't you spend 30,000 more dollars on a better truck with more options? Why did you buy a Dodge? Why did you get a Cummins? You should have got a Hemi. You should have got, a, you know, a Super Duty. You should have got it. it, it just, I, I understand that a lot of you out there 
would have done things differently. You would have bought something different because that's what you would want or that's what you would need for what you do in life. But keep in mind, I'm not you and you're not me. I feel like I made the best financial decision I could and bought what I needed for what I do and I'm happy with it today. T today. I don't know about tomorrow, but today, <laughs> you guys know how I am. I've seen the comments too. Like, oh, he's gonna have this one for what, three months? I had the Tesla for two. <laughs> I mean, who goes out and dumps $66,000 on a car and <laughs> they get rid of it in two months? Now, I know, I know there. I know that's another question. A lot of you are going to have is like, uh, so how upside down were you on the Tesla? Because I know you took a bath on it. Well, truth of the matter is, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I did not get hosed on the Tesla. I really didn't. That car had a uh, Kelly Blue Book trade-in value of seventy-four thousand dollars. That was a fully loaded, fully spec. When you go into the Tesla app, there are no upgrades available. There are no additional options. That car was as loaded as you could buy one. So trade-in value was $74,000, which was $10,000 more than what I owed on it. So did I make $10,000 on the Tesla? Not a chance, not a chance. I still lost a few thousand dollars on it, but that's the deal, a few thousand Sure as hell beats if I had lost 14,000 on the Corvette. Because that's what the Corvette trades in for right now is 14,000 under what I owe on it. So I'll take losing a few thousand any day of the week. So yes, there was a tad bit of negative equity from the Tesla and a tad bit of negative equity from the truck, the F-150, but it all wrapped up into the additional money that was available because this was discounted 14 or so thousand dollars off of the MSRP. Everybody's happy. I got a good interest rate. I'm happy today. Austin's happy. I am actually very happy. And I hope most of you are happy. <laughs> it's life's too short to not be happy, guys. God, I know, I know things are tough right now. I know the situation's got everybody stressed the hell out, myself included, but I'm still happy, man, because it could always be worse. I saw a car at a I saw a car at Copart the other day, and when I saw I saw the carnage of that thing coming out of the lot, and I, I I was like, you know, I was I was stressing that day over some things that were important to me, but in the big scheme of things, my problems aren't that important. And really, they're not. And I think that's something a lot of us lose sight of. And this will be kind of like my outro, just a little bit of wisdom from the Uberman here. You know, a lot of us think that our problems are the most important things in the world. And they are, to you and to me, you know, but to the next guy, your problems don't mean anything. His or her problems are the most important thing in the world. Let me tell you the, the fact of the matter. The truth of the matter is, your problems don't mean anything to anybody. My problems don't mean anything to anybody. Guys, every single one of us could be gone tomorrow and the planet would go on. You think the planet would miss us? I, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think planet Earth would be like, boy, I really miss those those humans that was sitting there, you know, tapping me out of all my resources, polluting the environment and killing as I'm driving a diesel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I hey, I'm part of the problem too. Okay, the difference is I can admit it. I know it, I can accept it, and I openly admit that I'm part of the problem too. We all get so caught up in our own lives that we forget that other people have lives and other people have problems too. So maybe the next time someone cuts you off or runs a red light, maybe instead of chasing them down and running them off the road or pointing a pistol at them, maybe you think for a minute, and maybe they had a really bad day. You know, maybe they're going through something too. Maybe something's going on in their life that you don't know about, that you don't understand. Maybe show a little compassion, a little leniency. Things are tough, guys. Let's not make it any tougher. Somebody cuts you off, let it go. Now, somebody somebody runs into you, chase their asses down, drag them out the car. And... Oh, I'm kidding. No, don't do that. 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 That's illegal, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. They hit you first. I don't know. You know, who's your wording is, I'm kidding. <laughs> I got to stop. <laughs> We're getting sidetracked. Look, 
at the end of the day, guys, the, the point I'm trying to make is, is we all got problems. And, and you know, my problems are very important to me, but my problems probably are not important to 95% of you. And the same thing applies to you and your neighbor, the, ne the, the guy next to you at the grocery store, whatever, you know, just do the best you can, deal with your problems, be nice to each other. What was it? What was it? Jerry Springer used to say, uh, "Take care, take care of your." You never oh, watched Jerry Springer. The wrong oh person. yeah, boy! When I was living in the trailer <laughs> park, man, I was watching Jerry Springer smoking cigarettes all day. It was uh, until next time. Take care of yourselves and each other. I should end on that. Like I should just click. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. That's probably trademarked or copyrighted. Never mind. That's what. Look. I'm going to get out of here because I'm getting seriously sidetracked. <laughs> I'm just having fun, man. We're, we're doing 75 miles an hour in a big diesel truck on a back road. And this feels right. Like, I could probably talk to you guys for the next 45 minutes or so. This would be a good time to do a live stream. It just feels right sitting in this big old truck cruising down this two-lane road in the middle of the you guys probably can't see there's nothing but greenery there's cows everywhere future hamburgers are all over the place that's going to be black angus you know there's quarter round steaks right there there's ribeyes i see so much food out here it's making me hungry <laughs> with that i am going to get out of here so again big shout out to austin go check him out on youtube austin space c-a-r-r -R. link in the title link in the description link in the comment section yada 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 <laughs> are we done is that it? I think we're done. I think we're done. Until next time, stay safe out there, buddy. I will catch you all very soon in the next one. Please won't you be my neighbor. Goodbye, neighbor. <laughs>